What is up everyone? JD here. I hope you're all doing well today. Today I'm really excited to bring you my review of the free Tiger FT2103. This one here is a knife that I've had for about a week now. I've been handling, carrying, and using it. And again, I have changed the format for my channel so that you can see the unboxing and get the review all at the same time and get a good look at everything that comes with the knife from the unboxing perspective but you'll also get the full review because again i've actually handled it carried it cut with it um, and did everything that i needed to do to get my full impressions but i did want to include taking it out of the box so you can see everything that it comes with so hopefully you like that it makes me a little bit more efficient um, dedicates one video to the initial unboxing per se and review of the knife and then you can tune in for a long-term review if it is a knife that ends up staying in my inventory if it's a knife that i don't like then i've kind of already covered that i think in the beginning so those knives probably won't stick around having said that let's go ahead and run through the specs really quickly and then we'll bring out the comparison knives the free tiger ft2103 has a 3.35 inch d2 steel blade 4.21 inch g10 handles for an overall length of 7.87 inches and claiming to be 4.6 ounces let's go ahead and bring the scale over and check that weight so coming in at 3.6 ounces so a full ounce under what the website said was the claimed weight and i was going to say it did not feel like an over four ounce knife it definitely feels much much lighter than that let's go ahead and run through the comparison knives and then we'll talk about comparables and final thoughts and impressions first up is going to be the spyderco yojimbo 2 which also is very comparable to the para 3 this one is the dlt trading exclusive with the 20 cv blade next up we'll bring out the spyderco shaman this one is the s30 v coated blade with the dark matter fat carbon scales as you can see the free tiger more closely lines up with the yojimbo 2 which again is very close in size to the para 3 so hopefully this is already starting to give you an idea of the size of this knife next up we're going to bring out a very comparable knife which is going to be the benchmade bug out very very similar size presence is very similar to even though they are not identical then we're going to bring out the case kenzua this one here has the s35 vn blade aluminum scales and it is a frame lock and you can pick that up for 115 dollars which is a steal of a deal <laughs> as you can see this again closer in size to the bug out um a little bit more presence than both of these knives but knives but still very good i like this one a lot all right let's get these out of the way and bring out the budget friendly cheap knives that i have for this review First up is going to be the Kubi KU321. This one here is a sub three inch blade. And as you can see, the Free Tiger is just an overall bigger knife. Last but not least is going to be the Buck 110 Plus. And again, you can see the Buck is just a bigger knife. Fantastic value on that Buck. $28, you get 420C FRN and a made in USA knife. So I love that I've added this to my review or comparison knives for the channel. Really do think that's a fantastic buy. All right, let's go back to some comparable knives. First up is going to be the Gonzo. This one here is the seven, uh, FB727S, just to give you again, a reference to the size of the knife. If you have that Gonzo, or if you have an Atari Rat 2, which is a little bit smaller than the Gonzo, then you have a really good idea for the size of this knife. The last one that I'll bring out here as an alternative option to this knife at the same price point is going to be the Reich. And this is going to be the P801. This one here has 14C28N as opposed to D2 steel, and it is a steel frame lock. Again, I think if you're looking at this knife, you're probably interested in the fact that it has that crossbar lock, but I did want to at least give one alternative option for this review. This is not going to be as long of a video. Thoughts and impressions. Well, this knife to me makes me think of the Wii Banter and Benchmade Bug Out. If they got together and had a baby, this reminds me of that styling, the way that it has that kind of blockier style to it, 
but it also has that Benchmade bug out uh, blade shape to it. Really just makes me think about that. Steel liners that are not milled out, but again, at under four ounces, really doesn't need it. It does have a fold over deep carry style pocket clip that is not reversible, but it does not go all the way to the edge of the knife. It leaves just a little bit of blade, I mean blade, knife sticking out of the pocket. Really not that bad, but it isn't truly deep carry because they have it there for that standoff. The pocket clip itself works really nice. It is a little stiff, but it does go into the pocket. You just have to give it a little bit more go to get it to go in there. And then the scales are done so nicely that they just have very, very minimal micro milling on them. So it doesn't feel like sandpaper going in and out of the pocket. Thumb studs are in a little bit of a bad place. I wish that they would have chamfered this down just a little bit to get into there because you're just getting the very tippy top of the actual um, thumb studs. As you can see here, you can just barely see over to them and you're just barely getting to them when you go to deploy them. I love the action on this knife. It is on bearings and it has one of the smoothest budget oriented crossbar locks I've encountered. Even when I'm letting go of this, it does go all the way smoothly down. It does not have any resistance. It has a consistent action all the way through which is crazy because i found this one by accident i was looking for the gonzo to try to get some of those on the channel because i've had some folks tell me about the gonzo and i wanted to check them out and i found this by accident i actually meant to order that gonzo fb727 that i had on here when i I had clicked on this one and when it came in I realized what happened but I was like well it is D2 it's G10 it seems like it has very similar specs it's on ceramic bearings why not go ahead and just check it out and do a review and share that with you guys so that's what I wanted to do um, again the edge on this very surprising it came through pretty sharp let's see if I have any leftover paper over here I do so let me show you just how how sharp it is out of the box this is that paper that sits out in the garage and uh, it's super, super thin, super damp. And you can just see this edge is crazy sharp. They did a really good job with the factory edge on that. Not a huge fan of the satin finish, but you know, the, at this price point, you really can't complain too much. I'm not a big fan of the thumb studs and the tension for the bar. The springs on the Benchmade are substantially lighter. These are heavier, so you have to squeeze a little bit more, and you don't have a knockdown to get to those access bar lock. I'm sorry, the crossbar lock studs. They are a little bit uncomfortable to operate repeatedly, but it does have very smooth action. The again, they could have potentially milled out. I mean, I guess maybe at this price point, it's tough to do that, but they could have milled out the liners to save a little bit more weight, but they didn't. But I mean, again, at $28, hard to argue that. Now, I, all the chrome on this, and, and that's part of the budget values, you get a lot of chrome, not really appealing to me. Um, I know that I mentioned the Reich a little bit earlier and it does have the chrome, but I think the difference being here is it doesn't look like it's as obvious that it has that cheap chrome on the hardware because they give you that pivot collar. They give you the coated thumb studs and they give you a coated pocket clip to kind of combat that budgety look. To me, this looks more like um, a more expensive knife when it comes out of the pocket even though they're able to bring this to you for around 30 bucks i feel like this just has a better look to it now that's just from an aesthetic perspective as far as the knife and the operating of the knife this thing really did surprise me i cannot believe how well the action works on this and how well that edge has come from the factory. Don't know anything about the heat treat or the D2 that's coming from Free Tiger, so that's full disclosure. When it comes to these brands that are Amazon sale knives, I cannot say that I necessarily back them. You run the risk of hoping that it has a good heat treat and that'll be a good performing steel. D2, as I always say, is not a strong, tough steel. It is prone to chips and microchipping and things of that nature when you use it. 
but it does have extremely good edge retention and very low corrosion resistance so it is more prone or susceptible to moisture and getting damage all right so that is my full review i actually fully have to admit that i i can recommend this knife i've again I've, from using it for a week <laughs> the edge seems to be very sharp coming from the factory it has held up from the little bit of testing that I've done through some paper and through on some cardboard. Um, the ergonomics are the most comfortable out of the ST124 and the uh, 727, the FB727 from Gonzo. This one actually has uh, my favorite ergos and it does have a better blade shape in my point. Uh, in my opinion almost being a spear point but it gets that tip down low to where you can actually use it so this is definitely one of the most surprising finds that i have found this year and i don't even know how old this knife is or how long it's been around that is my review of the fi uh, free tiger ft2103 I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor, leave a like for the video. And if you're enjoying the content, consider subscribing. I'd love to have your support as and follow along as I grow the channel. Thanks for everyone out there that already supports. You are amazing. And I appreciate I appreciate each and every one of you for your support, your continued support, the energy action and engagement in the comments just really helps me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for following me over on Instagram. Quite a few of you have followed me over there and messaged me and talked to me, and I really appreciate all the kind words and support. I hope all of you have a fantastic week. Until next time, peace.